It seems like every year we do a video on Nugget center Nikola Jokic and why he's a legit MVP contender. But this season is a little different, as he's tweaked the way he's playing offensively and has gotten the Nuggets to a surprising spot at the top of the Western Conference. So let's examine what he's doing and whether this is something sustainable, as we're witnessing equal parts old school throwback and modern era fundamentals in a cocktail of winning basketball. With a body the size of Jokic, it's natural for a coach to just roll the ball out there, tell him to get his butt down low, and feed the beast. And I want you to notice one thing he's got that's very helpful, the inside arm elbow clear out as he spins. By keeping both hands on the ball, it makes it seem like he's not getting that chicken wing out there, but it's clear he's using leverage with that elbow and the defender's reactions clearly indicate to me that their ribs will be sore the next day. We've seen this used by hundreds of low post players like Shaq before him, and as long as it's allowed, he should keep doing it. But let's get to the fun stuff, his passing out of the post. For all his physicality under the hoop when trying to score, he offers a masterclass on vision, angles, and audacity. The Nuggets like to run a cross screen with Jamal Murray for him, which helps to get incredibly low post position. But then watch what Murray does. He sets a screen with his back to the baseline for Aaron Gordon. Jokic isn't bothered by a double team with the guard, looks at the wide open shooter in the left wing before seeing Murray's pointing and wrapping a bounce pass around AD for the easy dunk. He commands so much attention down there that all five defenders stare a hole through him and his teammates know it's not a matter of if, but when they cut. He will find them and they will dunk. It doesn't have to be from the low block either. I like how head coach Mike Malone gets a suggestion from his assistant to run that play where Jokic makes an incredible pass. You know, that one. And after the switch, the defense freezes, Aaron Gordon moves to the hoop, and he pinches off a lefty squirt pass to his favorite target. Now to the audacity part. Why teams insist on doubling him with a post feeders man who's cutting through, I have no idea. But it leads to this a wraparound behind the back bounce pass perfectly between two defenders for the add one. This works because defenders are trained to get their hands up in the post, especially when doubling. So for Jokic, this is the best way to deliver this pass. Because he's such a low down low, he regularly commands double teams. And Gordon has figured out he just needs to get to the opposite corner, wait for his man to go, and then cut to the hoop. With the guard on the weak side, he's too small to have any effect on the lob. Gordon doesn't even need to get all the way to the corner on some possessions, as he uses the flare screen setup to distract his man, and look where Jokic brings this ball to get the best angle to fire it on the baseline side, so only Gordon can catch it. Perfect. Now watch how they use that Gordon cut from the weak side corner to suck the help defender in the precise time they're cutting Murray to the corner for the hammer action. It's easy to see why this team is ranked third in offensive rating with such easy buckets running their main guy through the post so often. If your defense is not completely on point with their rotations when doubling, Jokic will dice you up like no other player in the NBA can. Just watch what happens in this quick hitter. Memphis starts out in the right position as they double the post and form an L around him. But David Roddy is too busy staring at Jokic to realize he needs to crash down on the cutter. And I wonder if Gordon is getting bored with all these layups. By the way, he's shooting a career-high 61% from the field, a full 9 points higher than his previous high, and it's 100% because of what Jokic is doing for him. We've seen players fill up the box score, but never quite like Jokic is doing, and if he gets to this level, he'd join only Oscar Robertson, which is why you should head over to underdogfantasy.com and check out Pick'em, where you can choose 2-5 to five players then decide on the over-under for specific stats. It's super easy to set up, and you can win up to 20 times your initial entry fee. I'm thinking Jokic will score less than 26.5 points tonight versus Aiton, so I'm picking the under, and you should too. But it doesn't stop there. You can make it a rival and add players from different teams to make it even more interesting. They've also got drafts where you can compete against me. You think you got what it takes? If you click on the link below and use my promo code BBALL, you'll get a deposit match of up to $100. So if you want a chance to get up to 20 times your money or beat me in a draft, you've got to check out Underdog Fantasy. Use my code BBALL 
Get up to $100 in matching deposits and you'll have a better chance at winning money and understanding why I love the one-timer assists that Jokic loves to throw where he sees the pass before he even receives the ball, leaving the poor defense no chance to even get a hand up. His teammates better be ready as these passes are thrown like lasers and you don't want to be the one to spoil such an incredible highlight. The Nuggets have really simplified the game for Jokic, since when he's not on the low block, he's operating almost exclusively from this area between the elbows as a ball screener. He's got tremendous touch from 10 feet and a variety of floaters and runners to choose from, making it very hard to deal with when the ball handler turns the corner and collapses the defense. And the guards have also figured out that the quicker they bounce it back to Jokic, the better. There's no one in his size that can shoot these as well as he can. Let's break down why this play is so hard to guard. Most teams like to drop the big man and lure the ball handler into the mid-range. They also want to use the defender on the weak side to tag the roll man, but putting Michael Porter Jr. on that side, it makes it a very tough decision to leave him and crash down. Then you throw in the ability of Jokic to jump off the one, release this high over his head at full speed, and have it swish straight through the hoop? Wow! If the defense opts to sag and contain everything, Jokic will take what they give him, and I think you're going to have to live with letting him have these long twos, but you can't let him be this wide open. And he can keep the defense honest, but just barely, by popping out behind the three-point line. These will be wide open slings to the hoop for him, and it's clear to me that with his two-motion shot and release point above his head, he'll struggle to ever be a consistent shooter from back there. He doesn't really have a vertical dip on his shot. It's horizontal as it moves from here to behind his head, and this type of energy transfer can make it hard to control distance. He's had moments throughout his career where he's been above average, but the trend line is clear and I don't see him getting it much higher than it is now. I also like this handoff that flips into a pick and roll they love to run with him out top. It puts a lot of pressure on the ball handler's man to have to corner and change directions quickly, almost guaranteeing penetration into the lane with the big man dealing with a two-on-one. If it doesn't immediately get them something, Jokic now has the ball feet from the basket. Good luck with that. Just watch how much work Kelly Oubre has to do on the initial attack, which was effective at containing, only to get screened once more, taken out of the play, and now Jokic gets another one-footed runner swish. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here, and I want to ask a little favor. I'm getting a little bit close to a million subscribers. I love to get there a little bit quicker, so hit that subscribe button if you like this. Give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, and stay tuned for lots more coming up all season long. But all this amazingness comes at a price, and that's because when the Nuggets don't have the ball, they can't seem to stop anybody. Overall, they're ranked 23rd in defensive rating, and even though they've perked up over the last 10 games, it's still a serious problem, and one that Jokic isn't helping much at all. Currently, the Nuggets allow the highest field goal percentage at the rim, and a big reason is because Jokic doesn't like to contest shots that are in his vicinity. He's content to offer very little resistance in the pick and roll, preferring to swipe at the ball with hopes for a steal, leaving him out of position to protect the rim. Teams continue to attack him out of the most common action in their offense, and time and again, he doesn't so much as get a hand up to pressure the shot. He's not mobile enough to hedge and recover, yet they have him attempt this on a significant number of ball screens, and the results aren't pretty. He's at his best when dropping into the lane, where he can use his good hands to swipe at the ball and force some steals, or take away angles and exploit silly mistakes by the ball handler, but most of the good defensive possessions I see are because of his teammates supporting him with really good rotations from the weak side, coming over more aggressively than you'd normally see in order to force the offense into making difficult skip passes. But it's just not enough to overcome the onslaught every night as teams hunt Jokic and get him involved as much as possible. And they're playing zone more than they ever have in an effort to hide him, and it's been pretty effective since they do have some good defenders out there. But the bottom line is that he's not playing well enough defensively to give me confidence that this team can make much noise in the playoffs. You know the good teams will target him in the pick and roll and roast the Nuggets around the rim. I suppose he's concerned about picking up cheap fouls while trying to contest. But what good is staying on the floor and running one of the prettiest offenses in the league when they can't get enough stops to win tough games? Perhaps it won't matter much to voters for the MVP award, who tend to value offense quite a bit, but they also value winning percentage. And if the Nuggets continue to stay in the bottom half of the league in defensive rating, there's no way they'll be close to the top of the Western Conference by the end of the season. And that will severely hurt Jokic's chances of repeating as MVP.